Good evening, everyone. This is Tina. How are you doing today? You know what happened. I just finished the recording of the Spring Bean Factory and Application Context, the video. Then I realized, I, I, I played that. Then I realized no voice. My voice is not recorded. Oh my God. So I have to redo it again. Uh, not sure if I can explain well this time. Anyway, let's start, okay. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Spring Bean Factory and application context. And uh, before that, I want to talk a little bit about the Spring Core. Okay, so Spring Core, the, you know, Spring is a big framework. It has uh, lots of uh, modules. Total probably now is 28. I couldn't remember it, the exact number, uh, number of the modules. Uh, and the Spring Core is the fundamental. And if, uh, if you're using LP and all the web or web MVC or OIM or Spring Cloud or Spring Boot, all of them are built on top of the Spring Core framework, Core module. So here we have the Spring Core, the module, okay? And the Spring Core is a fundamental. Actually, it has uh, four dependency. You can think about the jar files, okay? like uh, for the beans and uh, the core and uh, the context and the spring EO expression. It has another one called the spring context uh, support. You can integrate with other messaging, okay? Uh, spring core and the bean, which is uh, provide the feature of the bean factory. And the spring context, you can get the application context. So what are they and what's the difference? And if you want just to have a test application for spring core, this module, you just need to add spring context, this dependency, because spring context already has the, already depends, already has a dependency on the beans core and the spring ear expression. So you don't need to add a, them by yourselves. Only at the spring context, you can get other uh, dependencies. Okay, so now, what is a bean factory? What is used for, right? Uh, <clears throat> in a Java application, it's rarely you just have a, the, 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 you just using the static methods in a class, right? Most likely you are gonna have a deal with the objects, right? You, then how to get an object? As a programmer, what we did is using the new constructor, right? You new constructor, then you get an object, right? And uh, there's another way, uh, but, oh, sorry, the, the spring, which will do something different. Spring has a container. People will call spring container or some people will call IOC container. In the container, it will also manage, oh sorry, it should be object, object, okay. It will also manage a collection of the objects. So what's the difference between them, this object and object here? Object A is a programmer directly using new constructor to create that. Okay, uh, you, you might have other ways, but anyway, this object for instantiating, uh, initialization, and uh, if it has dependency, while well, them together, it's all managed by the programmer, the one who code, okay? But for the objects inside of this container to uh, create them, uh, instantiate, uh, instantiate them, is initialize them, and uh, if they have dependency, while them together, they all managed by the Spring container. Or we can call IOC container manage the life cycle of the objects, which if they are in the container, right? So if you uh, do the development, which is uh, uh, serverless and JSP before, 
When we deploy our JSP servlets application into the Tomcat, the container, as a programmer, is there any place you code like a new the servlets or new the filter or new uh, the listener? No, right? You didn't directly know. Uh, new because the creation or, or the life cycle of the servlets, filter, listener, they are managed by the Tomcat, the container. Uh, no matter Tomcat, Glassfish, anyway, the web container, right? So that web container will create them, initialize, destroy, and call. Okay, the life cycle of the servlets, filter, listener are managed by the uh, Tomcat container. The same thing here. A spring container will manage the life cycle of the objects. So we take one step back. We talk about you can create an object using the new constructor, right? There's another way it's using called a factory pattern. Similar like the container. Factory pattern is it has a factory class or factory object, okay? This factory is an object. And what did it do? It will read some configuration. Let it move uh, down a little bit, okay. It will read some configuration. And uh, why it read the configuration? Because in a Java class application, you have uh, so many classes. And you have also, you might be using other libraries, right? And the configuration tells the factory, okay, those are the objects I want to you create, not others. So the factory class will return an object, will return the configuration, and after the configuration is done, it will create the objects for you. Okay. And uh, if you need one project, you just tell the factory, okay, I need object A. Then the factory will give you an object A. Then you can call the methods and do other things. Your application is ready. Same thing, like uh, think about Tomcat the container, right? It will read what? It will read your web.xml. In the web.xml, you configure for the servlets, listener, and uh, the filter, right? It will read that, and Tomcat will initialize those bins for you. Okay, and the same thing in the Spring. Okay, Spring container. It will have something called a bean factory. Okay, and uh, the bean factory will read the configuration. What are the configuration in the Spring XML files? Or you can using annotations, right? Uh, this is other in Spring 2.5, and uh, you can also using what Java configuration class. This is add in Spring 3. So the Spring will read the configuration here. In the configuration, the programmer will tell Spring, okay, those those classes you need to create an instance for me, okay? And after it, bean factory will create beans. Beans is objects, okay? It will create a bean for you. So for those bins, which is inside the Spring container or IOC container, we are calling them Spring Managed Bin. Spring Managed Bin, because those bins are created uh, or instantiated, uh, initialized, uh, destroyed by the Spring. Okay, And uh, uh, after the, sp the bin factory is done the task, your application is ready for use. Okay, so it will take the input, which is a Pojo class. Class, okay, not in an object, class. You have to tell the class, and you have to, as a programmer, you write the class, you tell what are the configurations. Configurations is a tail spring. Those are the classes I want to create, manage for me, okay? And the bean factory will maintain a collection of all the beans initialized. And once you get a bean factory, whatever the, uh, the beans you want, you just ask the bean factory. So your application are wild together and ready for use. 
So this is a bean factory do. Okay. So another thing, what the last part is application context. You might heard these words a lot of times. So what is application context? First, the application context is a sub interface of the bean factory. And also application context, which is equals IOC container. When you heard about the IOC container, you can think about, you can, uh, you can directly match with application context. So since application context is a sub interface of Bean Factory, then you will inherit all the features Bean Factory provides, right? Which is manage the life cycle of the beans. Okay, manage, create the objects for you. It also adds some extra functionality you probably already used before, like integrate with the LP aspect already the programming. Suppose you want to do some uh, authentication or some cross-cutting features you can use in Spring LP, which is uh, proxy based. Okay, uh, dependency injection makes the LP available. If you don't understand dependency dependency injection or IOC, you can take a look at my uh, pre other videos. Okay. Next one is uh, handle uh, message uh, resource. If you watch my other videos before, you probably already see internationalization and uh, Spring and we see uh, where, how they handle internationalization is using the message properties files. It will have different properties files for different locale. Okay. And it also in the application context. And another one, web application context. Suppose you are using the Spring Web, okay, MVC, the to create a web application, then you have to have a web application context, application uh, level uh, specific context, like for the controller view resolver, they should be in the web application context. You can think web application context is a web container contains beans used inside the web uh, level, okay. And the application context will make sure your web, web application context will inherit all the features from web application context. Okay. And it might have other features like event uh, publication. And uh, you can take a look at uh, the Spring documentations okay, by yourself. So that's it for this video. We talked about a bean factory, which is the class, or you can think about uh, the object. Uh, manage the life cycle of the beans you want to spring manager for you and application context which is the IOC container it provide other features besides the bean factory provider for you like integrate with LP uh, internationalization handle for the messy resource and uh, other features okay so that's it uh, for this video and uh, in my next video I'm gonna give you some hands-on experience so hope after watching this video you understand web application context and bean factory so that's it thank you for watching this video and uh, see you next time bye bye